Good morning, ladies. You're welcome to today's Esther's preparation room. We thank God that God has kept all of us alive and we are well to witness another day. Today is Saturday, the 9th of September, 2017. And you're welcome to a place called Esther's preparation room where we stand in the gap as women. We believe God has raised us up to be intercessors. And our main focus is to pray for the church and for the nations and in the same token because we know that we are significant to both that god's purposes and his assignment for us as women that we will walk in it and will manifest it and this month of september the focus is on family uh, it's very we're very passionate about standing in the gap for families as we see all around us the destructions that are coming from hurricanes it's affecting families it's affecting communities it's affecting neighborhoods and while we're going to be praying in a bit more detail we know that what we are seeing in the physical is almost like a sign of the storm that has been against family or even in recent times we see so much storms in our in, in our culture as the definition of families have been broken have been destroyed as we see that the order that god wanted for families and for our community has been uh, has been trifled with and so we see nations upon nations that are broken because the family system is broken so this morning we're going to be standing in the gap as we pray for kingdom relationships and i'm very excited to invite to lead us today a lady who uh, she's very passionate about family she actually has a ministry that is called family matters and i'm privileged to invite tutu aladesuru as she leads us this morning to pray concerning kingdom relationships thank you very much tutu for honoring our invitation and we'll allow you to uh, lead us from here amen um, thank you so much, Pastor Nike, for inviting me again. Um, it's always a privilege to be able to um, share with God's people. I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much. And good morning, ladies. Um, my prayer is that this morning, the Holy Spirit will help us even to pray in accordance to God's will in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us just begin to worship. The Bible says, in Psalm 100 verse 4, that we should ent enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Let us just begin to worship God this morning. Let us enter his gates. I, I don't know, some of us may have had very rough week, but I just want us to put aside all the the, the things that did not work right this week. Let us just praise him. Let us release ourselves even into his presence. Father, we just want to thank you. We bless your name, oh God. Father, we thank you even for the gift of life. We thank you for the privilege of even coming into your presence. Father, we adore you. Lord, we lift you up. We thank you for your faithfulness. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 1 to 2, that I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will constantly speak of his glory and grace. I will boast of all his kindness to me. Let all who are discouraged take heart let us begin to just worship god let us praise him regardless of what we have been through lord we magnify you lord we thank you lord we exalt you you are a good god you are a faithful god there is none like you you are beautiful beyond all description you are too marvelous for words we lift you up this morning we thank you for joining us to the living because your word declares that only the living will praise you. Father, we thank you, O oh God. Thank you that we are among those that are alive because to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. We thank you, O oh God, that the fact that we are alive is proof that we have hope in you, O oh God. We exalt your name. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We praise you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord even for empowering us to even be a part of you oh god father we thank you we bless you oh god we thank you we thank you despite all the 
the, 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 the negative stuff going around us, despite the hurricanes, despite every, every, every bad news, Lord, you remain faithful. You remain constant in our lives, oh God. Father, we thank you for our going out, for our coming in, for our uprising, for our down sitting, oh God. Thank you for being mindful of us. Father, we exalt your name. God's word declares that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I want us to praise God this morning. Let us praise him in the beauty of his holiness. Father, we worship you, O God. Father, we adore you, O God. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none that compares to you, O God. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. We exalt your name, O God. Lord, we magnify you. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Your word declares that they looked unto him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Father, we thank you that you did not put us to shame. Hallelujah. We thank you because you always hear us when we pray. Father, we exalt you, O God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that we are made whole. Thank you for your righteousness. Thank you for, 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 for making us righteous, oh God. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, oh God. We magnify your name in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you this morning as we come into your presence with joy with thanksgiving father we bless your name we thank you holy spirit because we know that you are here in our midst we thank you because we know you are here to glorify to glorify jesus in our midst we just thank you we yield ourselves to you this morning holy spirit of god we pray for utterance, we pray, Lord, that you will help us to pray effectively in accordance to God's will in the mighty name of Jesus. We lay our burdens, we lay our cares before you, Holy Spirit, and we just yield ourselves to you, O oh God. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. This morning, as Pastor Nick has said, we are going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking and praying about kingdom relationships. That's the focus for this month. And um, we just want to thank God even for making us a part of um, his kingdom. In the kingdom of God, just as we have our relationship with God, we also have relationship with people. And there are different kinds of relationships. This morning, I decided to go in another direction to look at um, different kinds of relationships from another um, perspective. So I'll start with, um, with David. David is someone we all are familiar with in the Bible. And one of the things that we remember, one of the things we know about David is the fact that he was king. But before David became king, David went through all kinds of situations and he faced many challenges before he could become king. And it took the help of several people to help him fulfill this purpose that God had for him. Just like David, we, we all have purposes, different purposes that God, um, that God, we have purposes that God has for us. And in order to achieve God's purpose over our lives, God brings different people into our lives. And it is important that we understand the reason why different people come into our lives for in different seasons we go through different seasons in life and we have and there are there are diff, several reasons why different people come into our lives and i just pray that you know god will open our eyes of understanding to to want to see to understand the reason he has brought certain people into our lives and to be able to even maximize this 
um, the reason these people have been brought into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I'll, I want us to, to look at 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse um, I'm sorry, Second Samuel chapter 17, verse 27. The Bible says that, and it came to pass when David was come to Mahanim, that Shobi, the son of Nahash, of Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, and Machiah, the son of Amiel, of Lodabah, and Barzillai, the Gileadites of Rogelim, these people came to him. The background of this story was when um, David had become king and Absalom tried to um, take over the kingdom and David was fleeing. Absalom was David, David's son and David was running away from his son Absalom. But God prepared certain people and Basilei was one of them. Basilei was a friend of David. He was one of the people that came to meet David and brought him food to encourage him. In 1 Kings 2 verse 7, um, well, before I go to 1 Kings 2, so Basilei and all the other people listed came, they brought food, they brought all kinds of things to strengthen David and the men that were with him, his wives, his children, um, to strengthen them for, for the journey. And towards the end of um, David's life, when he was giving instructions to his son Solomon, in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 7, he told Solomon, show kindness to the sons of Basilei, the Gileadites, and let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom, thy brother. So I just want us this morning even to begin to pray that, that God will open our eyes of understanding to identify the purpose of the relationships that he has brought into our lives. The Bible did not give us a lot of information about Basilei. We don't know how long David and Basilei were friends, but at the time when David needed help, they may have been friends for years, but Basilei, and Basilei was there when David needed help to encourage him to, to minister to him. So I want us to pray this morning that God will open our eyes of understanding to begin to identify the purpose of the different relationships that he has brought into our lives, whether it's our families, our parents, our siblings, our friends, our colleagues, each and every one has a purpose that the big picture is to lead us even to the purpose that God has for us. And God has connected us to different people to do different things in our lives at different stages. So I want us to pray this morning that God will open our eyes of understanding, even to begin to identify these relationships. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning, Lord, that you will open the eyes of our understanding to begin to to identify the relationships that you have brought into our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will help us to identify the purpose of the different relationships that you have brought into our lives, whether it is our families, oh God. Father, open our eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to begin to, to see the people in our, in our lives through your eyes in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that will begin to sing by your spirit, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even the relationships that we may not understand. Oh, oh, Lord, help us, oh God, even to see these people through your eyes. Help us to see them, to, 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 to see the big picture of the purpose for which you have brought all, all these people in our lives to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that we will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that the people you have brought for, for different reasons in our lives, 
help us to understand in the name of Jesus. Some of these um, relationships, whether it's friendship, some of them may be for a short time. Lord, help us, oh God, even to maximize even this relationship in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to know when the season, help us to help us to, to, to maximize the season that we have with the different relationships that you have brought into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we understand the, 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 the reason God has brought these relationships in our lives, some of them may just be for a specific season. And so it is important also for us to know when some relationships have have quote and unquote done their time in our lives and you know when it is time for us to move on from such relationships so i would like us to pray this morning that god should help us to take an audit of the different relationships in our life in our lives just as we 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 do spring cleaning um with our with our in our closet let us I, it's also important for us to do an to to do an audit, to do a spring cleaning of the relationships in our lives, the relationships that have outlived their their purpose in our lives. It is time for us to take an audit because the time is short. This is the time for us to maximize the 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 time that god has given us this is this is the time for us even to be kingdom minded so any relationship that is not um that is not focused on the on god's kingdom on on kingdom purpose it is time for us to let such relationships go so i want us to pray this morning that god will open our eyes that he will help us even to take an audit of the different relationships in our lives and that some of these relationships the ones that are time wasters that god will severe us even from these wrong relationships in the name of jesus christ lord i pray oh god that you will help us oh God, even to take an audit of every relationship in our lives. Help us, oh God, even to maximize time in the name of Jesus, that we will be able to eliminate time wasters in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, even to identify the relationships that you have brought into our lives, the ones that are for this season in the mighty name of Jesus, the, the relationships, the friendships that will help us achieve the purpose that you have for us. And this brings me even to um, the men of valor that helped David become king. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 12, it's a long read if um, we begin to read the entire chapter. Of course, we will not be able to read the entire chapter, but the book of um, First Chronicles, chapter 12, breaks down the different um, helpers that David had. These were men of war, but all of these men, even though they are men of war, they all came with different skills into David's life. They came, they did different things. In 1 Chronicles 12, the Bible talks about these men um, that came to David while, he, in, while David was in Ziklag and he was running away from, you know, um, he kept himself away from Saul. These mighty men were the men that came. Their purpose was to help David become king. That was the big purpose, to help David become king. But in helping David become king, they all played different roles. The Bible talks in verse 2 about the men that were armed with bows and they could use both their right and their left hand in hurling stones. These men had different strengths. Some of them could use the shield and buckler some were strategists the bible talks about the children of Issachar men who understood um, um, the time and knew what Israel ought to do this the children of Issachar were like strategists that helped David they were few in number but they understood strategy the bible talks about 
the men, um, those that could keep rank, um, the men of, um, I believe it was the men of Manasseh, the Bible says that they were men that could keep rank. These were men that brought order, they brought discipline into David's camp. This, all of these people had different strengths, and, but their main purpose was to make David king. So in our lives, there is a purpose God has for us. But in order to achieve that purpose, God brings different people into our lives to do different things. I'm sure when we, when we um, take an audit of the different um, relationship in our lives, it could be our siblings or our friends or our colleagues. We have people in our lives that when we talk to them, they bring order into our lives. When we talk to them, they bring strategy. They're able to say, oh, this is my, you know, this is what I think you should, this is the angle I think you should be thinking. And when we talk to these people, it just brings clarity to our vision, to our plans. So I just want us to pray again, using this scripture that God, the different people that you have brought into my life, the different people that come with different um, kinds of arms, whether it's to help me to strategize, whether it is to help me to, to be more disciplined, whether it's to help me to be more focused, Lord, open my eyes, help me to spend time you know to spend adequate time with these different relationships help me lord to maximize these different relationships that you have brought to my life the bible talks about this man in verse um first chronicles chapter 12 verse 38 all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart a committed heart to hebron to make david king over all israel Lord, let us begin to pray that, Lord, you will help me, oh God, that all these people that you have brought to be committed to me, help me, Lord, to identify these people in the name of Jesus. Some of these people, God has brought them into our lives to be our mentors. Some of these people are supposed to help us spiritually, to help us um, in our spiritual development. Some of these people are supposed to help us in our, in our careers to succeed professionally. Some of these people are there in our lives, even to help us to be successful in our relationship with God, to be successful where we are today, whether we are single, there are some people that have been brought into our lives. For example, Esther Preparation Room. It, this is a ministry that God has brought into our lives for such a time as this to help with our spiritual development, to help us stay focused. For example, all week we may, you know, we may we may deviate, we may just, you know, get ourselves into, um, you know, all kinds of things. But on Saturday. The one hour we spend here, it brings us back. It, it realigns our focus. It helps us even to be disciplined spiritually. It helps us to, to intercede. It helps us, it, it, it helps us even to think beyond ourselves, to think about other people as we pray for, 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 for our leaders, as we pray for nations. This is one ministry that God has brought into our lives for such a time as this. So we thank God for um, Esther Preparation Room. We thank God even for the wonderful women that God has connected us with. So this is an example of um, kingdom relationships. So I just pray, let us continue to pray that God will help us even to identify other such relationships that he has brought into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will help us in the name of Jesus, even to maximize the different relationships that you have brought into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, even with friendship. Um, an example of friendship is David and Jonathan. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 18, that, and it came to pass when, 
And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. The background of this story was when David went to, um, to see his brothers and he, when David went to see his brothers and he um, fought with Goliath and, come, and killed Goliath and um, Saul inquired that who was this um, young lad and he, they, they told him it was David and they brought David before Saul. After Saul spoke to him, Jonathan of course was, was Saul's, Saul's son and he was with his father and right there David and Jonathan connected. Jonathan was, even though Jonathan was the prince, Jonathan was supposed to be the next in line to succeed his father Saul, but that was not supposed to be the case. Despite this, Jonathan understood that God had anointed David to, to take over from his father. Jonathan was not jealous of David. Jonathan was committed to their friendship, even at the risk of displeasing his father. Jonathan was the one that helped David to escape when Saul wanted to kill him. So we need friends like Jonathan, friends that are committed to us, friends that are committed to our success, friends that are committed to our destiny, friends that are not that are not threatened by our success, friends that are not threatened by God's purpose for our lives. Let us begin to pray this morning that God will help us even to identify, even in our areas of friendship, this is the time that we need to be able to identify the role of the different friendships that we have. Jonathan was there to help David. Jonathan was one of those that helped David achieve God's purpose in his life. So let us pray in the name of Jesus that God will help us to seek out true friendships, friends, friendships that will endure the test of time, friends that will build us up, friends that, will, that we will build each other up in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray that they are, besides friends, they are also helpers, just as we discussed earlier about the men that helped David. The Bible also talks about um, Aaron and her. Aaron and her were the men that helped Moses when um, they went to fight against the Amalekites. Joshua was the one fighting with um, the men of Israel against the Amalekites. And the, 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 the strategy that God had in winning this war was that Moses would lift up his hands. When the hands of Moses were lifted up, the children of Israel were, were winning the war. But of course, Moses got tired. And once his hands go down, the, the children of Israel would begin to lose. So Aaron and her were the ones that took him to the top of the hill and they lifted his hands. They helped him to hold up his hands. So let us pray in the name of Jesus that God will bring people into our lives, people that will lift us up when we are weak, people that will strengthen us when we feel weak sometimes as, as 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 you know it could be in our careers we may feel that, that it just seems like we're going nowhere in our careers it could even be in our relationship it could be that oh god why am i still single at this time it just seems like my life is going nowhere we just feel like we're in a rut but the truth is even in the midst of this there are people that god has brought into our lives to to, to, to steady us. So let us begin to pray that God will open our eyes of understanding, even to begin to identify these people that he has brought into our lives. The Bible says that, that God said he will never leave us or forsake us. So Lord, I pray that you will connect us, you will, you will open our eyes, even to the people you have brought into our lives. I pray, Lord, that you will connect us with kingdom-minded people, people that will help us even to fulfill your purpose for our lives in the name of Jesus. Even Paul, Paul had helpers, even though Paul was a great apostle, Paul could not do the work of the ministry all 
all by himself. He still had people that were helping him. The Bible talks about Timothy. The Bible talks about um, Epaphroditus. These were people that God brought into the life of um, Paul to help him. These were people that strengthened him. Even in the book of Romans, if we read Romans 16, Paul began, you know, Paul greeted all kinds, all manners of people. He greeted um, different people for the different roles they played in helping him. So let us just begin to pray to God that Lord, you will help us, even not, not just for the people that God is bringing into our lives, even for us as well, that God will help us to be kingdom helpers, that we ourselves, we will be there to help to, to to help establish God's kingdom. In the Lord's Prayer, the, the, the Bible says that let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Part of our part of our purpose is to establish God's kingdom on this earth. And for example, I mentioned EPR earlier. EPR is one of the ministries that God is using during this time to establish his kingdom at this end time. So let us begin to pray that God will help us to be kingdom helpers in the name of Jesus. God will help us to be builders in the name of Jesus. God will help us to be people that restore, people that lift up. God has called us into this ministry to help Pastor Nike as we establish God's kingdom on earth. This is, this is, let us pray that God will help us. Let us begin to pray. God has even, one of the, 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 the one of our purposes is to, to, to pray even for the leaders that God has brought into our lives, whether it's in governments, whether it's in church, church, whether it's in families, in ministries, let us pray that even we too will be people that lift up, that we too will be kingdom helpers, we will be kingdom builders in the name of Jesus, whether it's in the place of prayer, whether it's in the place of, 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 of using our finances to build God's kingdom. Let us pray that God will help us even to take our place in the name of Jesus, that even as God brings um, people into our lives, we too, God is putting us in other people's lives, that God will help us even to maximize the relationships that He is bringing into our lives in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that God will help us even as we, we desire for those of us that are single or those of us that are married, you know, one of the purposes of, of, um, of our unions to our spouse, one of the purposes of marriage is for us to, to produce godly seeds because the Bible says God desires godly seeds and that our, even our relationships, our marriages should should um, expand God's kingdom. It should advance God's kingdom. That is the big picture. Of course, we will, you know, we desire to be married. We desire, you know, to have our own spouses. But beyond that, there is a big picture. And an example of, of, of one of such kingdom marriages, one of one, one couple in the, in the Bible that were kingdom minded, are Priscilla and Aquila. Um, in, in the book of Romans chapter 3, um, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 16, verse 3 to 5, these were a couple that Paul specifically mentioned. Paul said that they were his helpers in Christ. These were people who laid down their neck for Paul. The Bible in verse 4, who have for my life laid down their necks unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. These people, beyond being a husband and wife, they were also helpers unto Paul. They, they helped to establish God's kingdom. They opened up their lives. They opened up their homes. So as we pray, even as we desire, you know, to be married, for those of us that are married, that, you know, help us, Lord, even to be kingdom minded, to see beyond our own desires. Help us to see the big picture of your kingdom, that the reason for which you have brought us 
to, or the reason for which you are bringing our spouses into our lives is also for the expansion of your kingdom. Help us, oh God, even to unite. Help us that even when 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 we consider the 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 things we want in our spouses, help us to be able to focus on the things of the kingdom. That we will we will we will seek out people that are kingdom minded in the name of Jesus. We will seek out men that are kingdom minded in the mighty name of Jesus, men that a husband that together we will establish your kingdom on this earth in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will help us, O oh God, that even as in, in our unions, O oh God, in our homes, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us like that we will we will bring up even the people you have brought into our lives our children the children that you have given to us the children you will you will give to us that lord we will raise these children we will build these relationships in, in the kingdom way lord in the mighty name of jesus i pray oh god that for us and our spouses we will be committed to the things of you your kingdom help us oh god that we will pro that our union will produce godly children in the name of jesus the bible says in isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 that our children shall be taught of the lord and great shall be the, the peace of our children in the name of jesus these are also relationships that god is bringing into our lives not just our spouses but even our children lord that let us pray that even this children that God will bring into our lives for those of us that don't have children yet and even for those of us that have children that these children that God is bringing that God has brought into our lives that God will help us even to raise them in a godly way in the mighty name of Jesus that our children will be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace in the mighty name of Jesus Heavenly Father we just thank you this morning we thank you for the different relationships in our lives we thank you even for the different people you have brought into our lives, whether um, they are our colleagues, whether they are our friends, our families, our spouses. Father, we just thank you this morning and we pray in the name of Jesus that beginning from today, Lord, we will go enter into another level in all these relationships in the name of jesus we will understand the purpose of these relationships in our lives and we will maximize them for your glory for your kingdom oh god in the name of jesus father we, we, we with our relationships we will understand their purposes in the name of jesus and we will maximize it to your glory oh god father we just thank you we thank you for a new beginning in the name of jesus that we will be kingdom minded kingdom focused oh lord in the mighty name of jesus father we just thank you and we give you praise oh god in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen thank you so much Statue. what a very encouraging session we thank god this morning we're also going to be praying for the persecuted church in Myanmar. um Myanmar is, uh, is, a, is a country with uh, a population of close to uh, 55 billion million out of which 4 million are christians and which is less than uh, if i'm correct 10 percent and uh, their current leader is called president hintin koi uh, i hope i can i might not get the name properly uh, but myama is a is a is a nation who's uh, who is buddhist and who is 80 percent of buddhism um and they have roughly about maybe two percent catholics and five percent protestants but it's a buddhist majority nation that also really is on the human rights watch list because of the persecution of christians but also actually the persecutions of the rohingya uh, muslims and i found it quite interesting that this week as we are praying i mean like i always say we've selected all these countries in way in advance and there the rohingya muslims are so much more in the news in the last couple of days as we can see both christians and muslims face very very severe um persecution and people are killed or thrown into prison tortured raped thrown into you know hard labor camps um Myanmar has been ranked as 28th on the world's watch list of 50 countries where 
Christians are persecuted. And constantly we have more and more Christians look, seeking refuge in countries like Malaysia, you know, because of the religious persecution. And lately we see the, the devastation on the Rohingya Muslims. So we're just going to really stand in the gap and to pray for the persecuted church in Myanmar. And just ask that God would do a new thing in that nation, that God would deliver them. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that we should give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So let's thank God that even with the severe persecution in Myanmar, there is a remnant of 4 million Christians. Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you because Lord Almighty, all over the world, oh God, where there's persecution, there still remains Christians, those who are following after Christ, those who are serving you. Father, we thank you because your word continues to remain true, that it will spread all over the nations and all over the earth. We thank you for the Christians that have continued to stand. We thank you for the for their families. We thank you for how you have kept them. Father, we pray, oh God, for the refugees, Christian Myanmar refugees, oh God, we pray that, Lord, you will have mercy upon them, that they will not be broken in spirit, that your glorious unlimited resources will empower them, that you fortify them with inner strength, that you give them the grace to stand in the midst of persecution, oh God. We pray, Lord Almighty, that your grace will hold them together in the name of Jesus. As churches are typically attacked, we pray that you protect your churches. We pray that you send angels over the churches in Myanmar, oh God Almighty, that you protect them in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord Almighty, you are the one that can build the church and no one can prevail. We know that when they persecute Christians, they make it forbidden in parts of the Christians for Christians to attend church services, to walk to fellowship, so Christians are having to look for new ways to meet together. I pray, Lord, you will send help. The angels that protected Peter, oh God, and released him for prison. Father, send those angels to protect your children as they head out to church, as they try to go, as people try to infiltrate them, protect them from the snare of the fowler, protect them from the plans of Satan in the name of Jesus. We pray for the president, Heathen Core, and the leaders of, of of Myanmar. We pray that, Lord, as you shine light upon Paul, oh God, that God Almighty was on his road, he was on the move, oh God, to go and destroy Christians, but you arrested him. Arrest the leaders, oh God. Arrest government officials, oh God. Arrest those in power. Arrest those in charge of police. Arrest those in charge of enforcement. Let them come to know you. Significant people, leaders, oh God, give them no peace. Father, show up to them in dreams, like you showed up to the wife of Pilate, to show her that there's something about Jesus that was about to be crucified. Father, begin to move in ways that nobody can understand, to begin to deliver the nation of Myanmar, Oh God, from the bondage of Buddhism, from the bondage of the enemy, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for new believers, oh God Almighty, as new people come and they give their lives to you, we ask, oh God, that you will strengthen them, that their faith will grow. Even as we pray that those that are in government will come to know you, we pray that as they become new believers, that you will strengthen them. We pray that you will lead the nation of Myanmar, that you will direct them, that the evil, oh God, that is sitting upon that nation, that every form of of principality and power over that nation, that its yoke will be broken in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the Rohingya Muslims, oh God. We pray, oh God, because we know these are terribly, terribly mistreated people, oh God. They've been, they've been brutalized, they've been raped, they've been destroyed, they've been killed. Lord, we pray that even as they escape that you will send help, oh God, because they are your children, oh God, because Christ died for them. I pray that the Muslims will be the, the Christians will be the first ones to even extend help to the Rohingya Muslims, that they'll begin to see, oh God, you through the lives of the Christians, oh God, because Christians understand what it means to be persecuted for the living God, but that the Rohingya Muslims who are being persecuted for their faith, that they will come to know Christ, oh God. But Lord, you also raise help for them, oh God. You raise the living. Friends. Let the deliverance have been raised for them. Make them realize that, Lord, there is a God in heaven in the name name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will stir the hearts of those in, in, in the United Nations, that they will rise up and they will push for the right policies to deliver these people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Myanmar, oh God. Thank you because the battle is the Lord. Thank you because victory is of the Lord, even in the mighty name of Jesus. 
mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we also pray, oh God Almighty, for the whole of North America. We pray for the United States. We pray for South America. We pray for the for 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 Cuba. We pray, oh God Almighty, for the West Indies. We pray for the Caribbeans. We pray for the U.S. Virgin Islands. We pray for the for the British Virgin Islands. We pray for those regions, oh God. We pray for Mexico, oh God. There is a push. There is an attack. There is a rage. Oh, Lord, we raise up our hands in the spirit and we say, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Many are crying this morning. Many are afraid. Children don't know which way to go. Many have been uprooted. Lord, we are in the comfort of our homes, but our hearts, oh God, bear and carry this burden. We pray for mercy. Mercy, oh God. We pray for mercy, oh God. This is a major judgment that is coming. We know that we're in the last days. These are some of the signs that you talked about. But we pray that many will run to you, oh God, that the light of your word will shine upon their hearts. Father, please send help, oh God Almighty. Father, please send protection, oh God Almighty. People are in shelters. We ask that you keep them, oh God. We ask that this storm will dissipate in the name of Jesus. We pray against Jose that is building that it will dissipate, oh God. We ask for mercy. Mercy, oh God. We ask for mercy. You said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face. Lord, we seek your face. We have done evil, oh God. The lands are growing. The earth is groaning. The earth is being shaken. They are suffering the evil of man, oh God, even upon the land. But we stand as one who has authority because our feet are on this earth. And we say, earth, oh earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Wind, oh wind, hear ye the word of the Lord. Waters, oh waters, stay in your boundaries. In the name of Jesus, we speak peace. We speak protection. We pray for mercy. Father, we pray for all the governments of countries that have been affected. Please help, oh God Almighty. People have been devastated. Homes have been lost. But let these people not, let their hearts not be hardened, oh God. Let them look onto the hills from when salvation comes. Father, I pray for uncommon miracles, oh God. We say let the angels of God be on assignment, delivering many, sending help, bringing people from the shores of darkness. Father, let more people turn to you, oh God. When man is broken, their hearts are humbled. Let them not look to flesh. A lot of people have put their hearts in possessions. They've lost it all. Let them look to you, oh God. Let more people be saved, oh God. Let the love of Christ flow during this season, oh God. Let the grace of God manifest, oh God. Father, strengthen the various churches wherever they are, oh God, that they too will be able to give out of their own challenge. Let them create a haven of support. This is an opportunity for the body of Christ. Help us to arise in love and in support, oh God, even for these ones, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for today. As we've prayed about kingdom relationships, let the church be on the forefront of showing the love of Christ, even in this season. The church being you and I, oh God, let all of us, oh God, let us do that which you have called us to do. We thank you, oh God. We bless your holy name. We give you all the praise, glory, honor, and adoration, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining today's session. Uh, we hope that you would uh, continue to be a part of this ministry as you follow our prayers on our YouTube page or go to our social media pages, Esther's Preparation Room, connect with us. And we look forward to joining for, to you joining us next Saturday, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a lovely week. Thank you.